Good Friday afternoon to you. Four o'clock in time for Sports for CLE. Thanks for joining us. Hope your weekend is off to a, a really nice start. Uh, plenty of Browns to talk about a little bit later in the show. Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report will join us. We begin by talking Browns rookie mini camp uh, for the guys the Browns just drafted. Uh, we'll get underway a week from today out in Berea. Next weekend, it will be rookie mini camp time. Andrew Barry talking about what he is doing these days, getting ready for rookie mini camp. You know, we're excited to have our guys back in the building. They're really going through. I'm going to call it spring ball. It's basically spring ball. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's um, a heavy period from a staffing standpoint for us because that's when you have maybe the most the most turnover you're, or you're you know retaining your staff across football operations. Uh, and then you're also still trying to put some of the finishing touches on your on your roster. Um, like right, you know, we signed. Um, or agreed to terms with Rodney McLeod right. today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there may be some other things that we're, that we're looking to do either on the veteran market or trade market over the next several weeks. But then once you get the veteran minicamp, it really is like a, okay, you can, you know, catch your breath a little mm -hmm. bit. And that doesn't mean that you won't have some outstanding business with the team. Right. Um, but that's, that's a period where I really try and unplug. Well, there you go, G. Bush. Uh, you hear it? He's got a – it sounds like he's, he's still working. He thinks – He's got one or two more additions to make to this roster, and I'm all for it. Listen, I like the urgency. I love the urgency. Um, you know, this, the, this type of urgency I wanted to see last year. Uh, and this seems like a, a, a front office, and it seems like a coaching staff that is very interested in getting top-notch competition. One of the things that I thought was always a problem, I'm going back and just looking over the last few years, you had young guys that were coming in that were top picks, number one overall picks, maybe top 20 picks, second round picks. Those guys, because of the lack of talent we had on this on this team, those guys were come, they were come, you come in and all of a sudden they penciled at the top of the roster. I could never forget Corey Coleman talk about why is he running with the twos. I'll never forget that. He comes into the huge Jackson's office is like, why am I running with the twos? Well, Corey, maybe because you ain't good. Like, you're just not very good right now, Corey. I don't know what you do well. Uh, yeah, what do you mean trade you? We tried to trade you, but we couldn't get nothing for you, Corey. So we're pretty much stuck. You don't like us. We don't like you. It's just we, we're just going to have to deal with it. I always laugh at situations because, you know, those guys so often are given positions, given their reps, and then now you don't have any competition. They sit out half a camp and you get to the season. And then they want us to they expect to be patient. Be patient. They're just rookies. They're just young guys. No. This guy, I'll tell you what, Andrew Barry has made an over, overlook and basically overhauled a lot of the people that they have at multiple positions. Go back and look at the wide receiver unit. Go back and look at go go back and look at some of the, all those other different things. And you see. That with the wide receivers, there's a lot of people. With the defensive line, more depth. Continue to bring in safeties. Continue to sign offensive linemen. So this is what I like. I love the fact that now you have an opportunity to have true competition for all of these positions and roster spot. And the fact that they're going to have 90 people all the way through the end of training camp, all the way through the end of the preseason games, means that guys are going to be consistently fighting to get good game tape and that's going to make you better in the long, in the long haul. So um, along those lines, um, the Browns have checked in with a, a notable defensive tackle that's on the free agent market, Nimdamakam Su, um, before the draft. Nothing ultimately developed per a league source. Uh, not sure they need another defensive tackle, but again, I like the thought. Go find another. If you think you got enough, go get one more. Yep, it, it, right when you think you got enough bodies or enough guys that's nasty or enough guy that's can rush the passer, go get me another one. Um, I would like them to to extend that search to linebacker. I think that the, the linebacker court needs an upgrade in terms of some veteran presence, some, and they need some young legs in that linebacker room. So I'm all for it. And 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 so here's the thing too: I'm not going to be one of those those Browns people. And we got to get out of this too, you know. As a as a collective Browns community, we have to we have to stop saying, um, anytime we bring up a name, we don't need them. See, we we aren't Super Bowl champs. We have not run the division. Whenever um, it's been years since we've won the division. When we win the division, that's when you can tell us we don't need that person. Until we win the division, everybody's on the table. Everybody. I don't care if it's a guy with kind of a checkered history. I don't care if he's a little expensive, maybe a little older. 
everybody needs to be going over with a fine-tooth comb because until we get to where we want to go, we got to stop saying, oh, we don't need that person. We got this person, that person. No, yes, we do. We need everybody to be looked at because because that's where we're at in, in our progression. We want to get to the top of the mountain. We can't look like we got a roster at the top of the mountain, don't need people. Uh, along those lines, uh, Aaron Wilson, who is a uh, pro football national guy for uh, CBS Sports, tweets out uh, that the Browns uh, – Worked out. They're going to work out. Defensive player of the year from the XFL. Pita Tuama Pinua. And uh, don't ask me to there say that again. Under the rules, XFL players eligible to sign with NFL teams May 15th. Former Utah linebacker. There you go, G. Bush. See, you want a linebacker? I'm giving yeah. you a young linebacker. There you Seven go. Seven and a half sacks, eight tackles for losses, four forced fumbles this year for the Vegas Vipers. So, again, um, I'm not going to lie to you know, that, that I know anything about it, but if he's playing well at the XFL, he's worth a look. Yeah, he is. You want to get me? Hey, I like seven sacks in, in professional football. I don't care what type of professional football it is, right? Come on in. We, I like linebackers that have some rush ability, and I love the fact that you're not just looking at regular guys. You're looking at guys at USFL. You're looking at guys at XFL. You're looking at undrafted dudes. You're looking at college guys. You're looking at free agents. All the above letter D. I think, I think the Browns are now in this offseason. When people talk about the draft, I say draft is just one part of, uh, of creating a roster. What I'm excited about is the Cleveland Browns have a little bit of urgency and a little bit of variety in the ways that they are going about doing that. They're looking for players by any way, shape, or form, whether we can get there by land, sea, or the air. That you know, it sounds like the United States military, a commercial. <laughs> they're trying to get they trying to get all the people they can get in here in Berea, and I'll take it. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, this is from Pro Football Focus. Uh, one major uh, 2023 NFL draft takeaway for all of the 32 teams in the NFL. Browns, high ceiling players have a chance to make this a playoff caliber team. Even last year, the Browns had one of the best rosters on paper. They just really struggle both with and without Deshaun Watson. Talent level on the roster is still there for them to be a playoff team, and they brought in potential impact players to fill the holes of their roster. So basically, G. Bush, I agree with this. What they're saying is, looks great on paper. Let's see it on the field. Yep. Yep. If you look at what the team is on paper, uh, they definitely have an opportunity to become a playoff team. Uh, I think when you go roster position by roster position, group by group, you still have some of the best players in the league. I always say it, man. Look, if you got the best running back in the league, you got arguably one of the best uh, uh, rushings in the league. You got arguably one of the best offensive lines in the league. You Like, what? Dang. Well, what do you need, bro? Like, <laughs> you, you, you got guys that are, are great and high in PFF, you know, I'm looking at it from top to bottom. I'm like, wow, like, you know, take a look at free agency. People talk about how good the Browns did in free agency. I haven't seen them get Ds or Cs or Fs or anything in, in, the, in the draft area. So I'm doing the math on this. So if I'm like, I got some existing players. I did fill some holes that I needed to fill. I got one of the top assistants to come in and lead my defense. I got a quarterback that's going to have an offseason for the first time and, and looks like he's going to change the offense. I got a hungry running back that's back there that's saying, listen, people must have forgot about Nick Chubb. I'm ready to do my thing. And a bunch of new receivers. Listen, man, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't see where people got the Browns. Uh, you know, some of these guys, oh, the Browns are going to be five and something, and I think the wheels are, that's wishful thinking. You wish the wheels are going to fall off. At the end of the day, when you look at this roster, this roster has as much talent as any other playoff team out there. Um, all it needs is to come together, and, and, and it has a lot to do with the quarterback. But on pieces and parts alone, the Browns have been, you know, we've won the Super Bowl on paper the last three years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, we, <laughs> when you look at the roster, especially last year, top end of it was really good. It's when you got into the middle to the bottom. The bottom of that roster had some guys that I just don't think are going to be in the NFL. Mm -mm. No, no, no. You're not going to. When you got past the top 20, you started to see there's no depth. Right. You started to see, uh, 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 that don't look too good. Um, and you started to watch those other teams, the Eagles, the Chiefs, some of those teams that were going deep into the playoffs, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. They had waves. And think about this. 
The San Francisco 49ers started, they, they were so banged up at quarterback. Christian, they thought they're going to have to put Christian McCaffrey back there as the uh, the backup, super backup uh, uh, quarterback. They, they, you know, uh, Purdy was gone. Then, uh, you know, the, the other backup came in. He was gone. They, I'm like, they had no quarterback. And guess what? They were so, they were so deep. <laughs> they were so deep on defense that the Eagles didn't even blow them out like that. The Eagles was like, we're going to hold on to go to the Super Bowl. But just think how good they were to be able to play without a quarterback and be able in an NFC championship game to still compete at that level. That's crazy. All right, before we go to break, college coaches uh, picked the sleepers from this draft. So guys that these guys played against, and they picked Cedric Tillman as a sleeper pick. This is from ESPN.com. SEC defensive coordinator uh, Tillman's got better hands than Hyatt. That's Jalen Hyatt, who was picked one pick in front of him. Um, when he was open, they could use his speed. That's Hyatt. They did a great job of creating open receivers. When he had to make contested catches, Hyatt struggled. Tillman will do a good job. Those biz, big physical guys do well. Power five coordinator. His route tree is bigger. He's just got more to offer than Jalen Hyatt. And, G. Bush, we were talking before he came on. I completely blanked out and forgot about Tillman. When he was healthy, he was really good uh, 2021. Yeah, oh, really good. He had 1,000 yards. Um, you know, that's that's one thing um, that, you know, it, that he can do. He's a big receiver. I always tell people like this. Uh, you don't have to – listen, if you got two good things, right, you don't have to minimize one to show love to one. Now, listen. Jalen Hyatt, uh, I, I'm still high on Jalen Hyatt, let's be clear. Uh, he's, he, you know, I would rather people be wide open. Um, and he was wide open a lot because he was running by everybody and their mom. But I will also take different other skill sets. Just because he can run by somebody does not mean that Cedric Tillman does not have tools that he can effectively win in this league too. He can go up and make contested catches. Uh, he's, he's strong with the football. He's going to have run after the catch three, four times. Uh, I watch him. There's guys that have to gang tackle him, pile up on him, grab his legs, and he's still a big body guy, Two, uh, you know, over 200 pounds, six foot three. He's going to be the biggest guy in the Browns receiving room. And one thing that we've seen is he's going to be able to, you know, make the back shoulder catches. He's going to be able to box out some guys. He's going to be able to go over the middle. You know, they did say, you know, one of the things that he can do is run multiple routes. Now, he does struggle a little bit getting separation at the top of the route. He will struggle, does not have elite speed. He does not have uh, elite acceleration. But we've seen people in the league be guys that, uh, you know, Vincent Jackson um, comes to mind. Um, guys like that, you know, Mike Evans comes to mind. Um, but Mike Evans is a little bit longer, uh, leaner. But, you know, guys that don't really have elite speed. So my thing is, he can definitely win in this league the same way J J Jalen Hyatt could possibly win in this league a little bit too, but doing different things. So, and, and the question is to me, and, and I was saying this before, is when you look at a quarterback, you look at all the quarterbacks, the great quarterbacks that, you know, are franchise guys. They always find a dude in camp that they like. They always find a go-to guy. You don't know, never necessarily know why they like him. But all of a sudden, you say, wow, this guy, you know, when a quarterback's under duress, he's looking for this guy. Or if he sees a one-on-one -on -one matchup with this guy, he's always going to so-and-so. So I'm looking forward to seeing who that is going to be for Deshaun Watson because I think there's going to be a receiver that we don't think is very good that's going to look really, really good based on the fact that Deshaun Watson's going to put some trust in him and Deshaun Watson's going to throw him the ball and develop this chemistry where they're on the same page and it just looks right and it clicks. So... They did not have an opportunity to develop that in six uh, weeks. However, I think that there's a large body of players that are competing for that type of uh, that type of connection, and I think it's going to be somebody to rise to the top that we don't expect. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch, and, and you can be sure um, the Browns are going to be throwing the ball more than they have in the past with Deshaun Watson as their quarterback. G. Bush and I are going to step aside, take a quick time out, other side of the break. We head to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. We continue talking Browns on Sports for CLE. Stay with us. Come back to go forward, back to learning new things, back to pursuing your dreams. Tri-C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Tri-C. 
where futures begin. We continue talking Browns with G. Bush from 92.3 The Fans, The Barbershop, as well as the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Let's head to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Hey, Dave, this is Greg from Youngstown. Man, enjoy the show. But let me ask you a question. I heard you kind of allude to and kind of passively address the undrafted free agents. But I think if you really would take some time and pause and look, you've got some gems in there some really gym, good gyms, especially when you start talking about safety. I, I was at, at Hickman from Ohio State, but I think you've got jewels right there in your undrafted free agent. Uh, and I think many times we, we pass over them because we don't get a big hoopla about them through the various rating services. But I think if you really take a moment and look at what we get with undrafted free agents, you'll be pleased. Hey, thanks for listening to me. Hey, go Browns. As always, appreciate all the voicemails. Uh, G. Bush, um, I, I like Hickman without question. I like the Phelps kid that's an edge rusher. The linebacker that they guaranteed 250000 uh, is intriguing. Um, it's still, for an undrafted rookie, it's hard to make the 53-man. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to make the practice squad. It's really hard to make the 53-man. Um, I believe uh, Deontay uh, Bell was the first one to do it in uh, Andrew Berry's Anthony regime. Bell, yep. Yeah. So, no, it's extremely hard. And, and to tell you how hard it is, they just signed another safety yesterday. Right. <laughs> yep. They just signed another guy who, you know, was, according to the PFF, had a really high coverage grade, played in the sports system. And so you need, you just look at, the guys that, you know, you have to beat out. You you have to be – there's a Grant Delpit. You got Thornhill. Those are your starters. They just got a guy the other day. Uh, then you still have a guy that we just talked about, DeAnthony Bell. He made the roster. So there's so many different guys you have to beat out in order to make a 53-man roster. And when I'm saying it like this, you got to beat them out tough. Because if you look at it, one thing that can happen is he's an undrafted free agent. You know how much it's going to take for them to cut a draft pick? Because the draft pick, they, they've already had money guaranteed to them. They already had a sign a bonus. So basically, you're saying that you paid a guy, not nah, maybe seven hundred, eight hundred thousand, a million dollars that you thought was a good player. You're going to have to change your mind based on how good an undrafted guy is, and to make a long-term assessment in a very finite amount of time. Meaning, oh, I only got to see this guy four or five weeks during the training camp, and he's that but that good that we have to cut guys we paid. That's hard to do. Yep. The best I always say to people is hopefully they can get to a practice squad. Hopefully they can, you know, make it to that level. And then if he's that good, somebody will claim him off the practice squad and put them on a 53-man roster. Or, or, you know, he develops and, you know, midway through the year there's an injury, takes advantage of it. You know, the, the, the main thing is come in and play well and see what happens. Um, this is from Dog Pound Daily. Three big winners after the Browns' 2023 draft. Uh, number three, defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz. Number two, tight end Harrison Bryant. Number one, Jerome Ford, uh, the second year running back, the backup to Nick Chubb. They, they did not draft a running back. Um, you could tell there were several picks um, that were Jim Schwartz style of players, which I think is what Andrew Berry should have done. It, it fit the players to the scheme you want to play. That's it, man. But, you know, people all say, "Hey, just get the get the best available." No, nah, man, we're not going to <laughs> we're not going to do that because you, you you mess around and get ran up out of town. Like if I'm if I'm Jim Schwartz, I'm like un, un, it's unacceptable. We're not drafting, you know, tight ends. We're not <laughs> We're not about to go down that route. You look at Siaki Ika, who was a guy who, you know, before, we take a look at the body types of the guys we had last year. Perrion Winfrey is more of a linear guy. Tommy Togia is not a huge, overwhelming guy in the middle. Jordan Elliott has some good size, but Jordan Elliott is not stouter to uh, the point of attack. Under no circumstances were they going in with those same body types. They go out and get Siaki Ika, who's a guy who you're going to take two guys to block. You're not going to be able to chip him and down block him. You're not going to be able to, to get your uh, your offensive lineman all the way up onto the guards immediately. And I guarantee you that this year, the top tacklers on this team will not be safeties, 
right? They will not be the guys that are in the secondary tackling people. I think that, that when you look at it, Jim Short said, listen, give me some guys. We're going to get this together. Uh, and they've done a good job of, of what they've done so far because think about it. You know, I even like, we haven't talked about it, the young defense, the, the uh, young defense in McGuire mm -hmm. um, out of, uh, out of uh, Missouri, you know, uh, Mizzou. Yep. It, listen, I love his size. And now you got some competition where we, hey, hey Alex Wright, we like you. <laughs> we like you a little bit, but you and Isaiah Thomas have a little bit of uh, a competition. Who's going to be rushing behind Miles Garrett? You already got Obo, a.k.a. the young OG over there. He's already ready to go. And now we got Hurst. We got Hill in the middle. You, <laughs> Tomlinson. So now you, you see how they flipped this whole thing over? Yep. They flipped, You went from having Cupcake City to you have some legitimate pieces and parts and different tools to use to get the defensive uh, upgraded. And you know what? They're going to be using a lot of those guys. He likes to rotate them in and keep them fresh. Um, yes, sir. This is from the Bleacher Report. One sentence to describe each NFL team's quarterback situation. Uh, for the Browns, Deshaun Watson is the third highest passer in NFL history, and nobody would trade for his fully guaranteed contract if his play goes south. Okay, I... Um, I saw that and I'm like, I don't know that anybody would trade for a quarterback contract if they hadn't played in, in a while and their play went south. So I, I get the thought. Deshaun Watson has to play better than he did, but you're not going to take on a contract for a guy if, if he's not playing well. Like, I'm not going to take on Aaron Rodgers' contract. Like, nobody wanted Tom Brady's <laughs> contract. Like, if, if, like, right now, nobody wanted to pay Baker Mayfield five years, and nobody really wanted to pay Lamar Jackson guaranteed money. So, I mean, what are you saying here? Like, what are we yeah. talking about? See, this is this the problem here. Let's, let's get to it. I told people like this. See, stories that are written like this are lazy stories because the narrative is that the contract is so prohibitively, demonstratively, the Browns will never be able to sign a person now, listen, it's purgatory. They, they live in Siberia financially, and they'll never be able to get out under this contract. And then here's what happens. Just day after day, people start coming. Oh, Jalen Hurts just got yeah. all kind of guaranteed money. Oh, let's see, Lamar Jackson, who you said didn't get no money, was getting some more money. And you know Joe Burrow's going to get more than both of them. So now that $230 million that you guys went crazy over, well, it's not a thing anymore because five to six more quarterbacks make more money than him. Right. He's he's not even really getting that much. He, he that, that we up to already 51, 52 yep. million guaranteed a year. Now that that 43 look a long way away, don't it? Right. And, yeah. So and now, when's, when's the last time somebody cut a quarterback like that? So it's the guarantee. I mean, they did it so that he has the security and he would would agree to the trade. That's why they guarantee the contract. They had yes, to. And, and, yeah, because and here's the thing: if you mad at us, like if you like, I sometimes I, I swear up and down. I think people they they want you to be they want you to be dumb. Like, did you want us to continue to go after quarter? Because you know you laughed yeah. at us when we had the jersey with 35 names on it, out of the Browns and their futility. You could write that. That was lazy stories too. But now you're mad because we went out and did something where we said, you know what, we we off the jersey. We are gonna find a quarterback and we got it for 230. It is what it is. Now you mad at us for that. I'm sorry. We can't. We don't care. We'll, it's all about to play on the field, bro. We'll see you. We'll see you September. See you. How about that? <laughs> G. Bush, as always, great stuff. Thanks so much for the time and the insight. Appreciate it, G. Bush. Appreciate you. G. Bush, make sure you check him out. 92.3 The Fans, The Barber Shop, 8 until noon on Saturdays. You can also check him out. Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 11 till 1. Monday through Friday. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. Other side of the break, video breakdown of this year's Browns draft class. Lance Reislin joins us, Sports for CLE. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. 
The Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame celebrates the star athletes and notable sports figures who were born or have made their home in Greater Cleveland. It tells the story of discipline, commitment, perseverance, sportsmanship, and excellence in achievement. It encourages and inspires those who believe in sport and its direct impact on the well-being of our community. Go to clevelandsportshall.com or follow us on Twitter at GCLE Sports HOF for more details. Sports for CLE continues. We continue talking Browns. Uh, we've talked a lot about the Browns draft class. Now let's do a little bit of a video breakdown. Whenever we do video breakdowns, we welcome in Lance Reisland from The Plain Dealer as well as Cleveland.com. Uh, so, Lance, you, you looked at all of the picks and kind of went back and looked at them. Um, the consensus is uh, Andrew Berry got some value with the not having a, a first or a second round pick. He's got some guys that can play. Yeah, they really did. They really went out and got some guys who have, they're really highly productive, and they're also, they have those traits you look for in later rounds in terms of speed, height, explosion, whatever it may be. They did a really, really good job of finding guys that not only are good, but fit their scheme. Um, and Tillman, for example, you know, that first pick, he, he, you know, is a guy you didn't do a lot with. I didn't do a lot with because uh, he's 23 years old. He comes off an injury. Uh, you go back and watch his uh, 21 film, really, really good selection. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's start with Cedric Tillman, big-bodied wide receiver out of Tennessee. Well, you know, he's 6'3", he's 215, you know, he had 64 receptions for 1,081 yards and 21 for 12 touchdowns. Got hurt last year with an ankle. Uh, he's got great ball skills. He's got great body control. He, his number one attribute without, a que without question is contested catches. So he can use that big body. Uh, he's got a great vertical leap. He's got a great broad jump. He can use that big body, like I said, to win those 50-50 balls. And that right now, I would say that it's his number one quality. If you look here, uh, this is the vertical route uh, he runs. He uses a great job of stacking that corner behind him. Um, doesn't run a lot of routes. Um, at Tennessee, they did a lot of verticals. He lines up only on the right side for the most part, on the outside. So he's going to have a learning curve. Uh, he's got a Marty Cooper to teach him. So I think that's going to be huge. But really a big, gifted athlete and, and a guy the Browns really kind of stole here in, the, in this round. And, and um, the other thing is NFL bloodlines. Dad played in the NFL. Um, and, and you see the, the catch radius. Everything you describe about him screams red zone target to me. Is that, is that the way you kind of look at it as well? Yeah, and again, he is a, he's a guy who's so long. He's got a great, he's got a great really good vertical leap, but he's a guy who can – create mismatches and they have a bunch of guys now with Amari Cooper and DPJ and their tight ends and Aikens and the Joku and they got all these guys that are big long athletes that are really going to cause some problems in the red zone and on third down uh, this is a specialist right now because of his limitations in a route tree like I said he has not run a lot of routes at Tennessee Tennessee does a really good job of some spacing and getting guys in space uh, so he'll have to learn some routes but yeah put him down in the red zone get him match up against a corner uh, he will not get the number one corner. That'll be Amari Cooper. So he, he should have a matchup that he can win. Um, also in the third round, uh, a defensive tackle that uh, we've talked about before, Siaka Ika uh, from Baylor. What do you like with him? Well, he's a guy, you know, I kind of, he doesn't fit last year's defense in terms of an anchor, but for what the Browns have added with Dalvin Thompson, you know, he's a guy uh, started off at LSU, then went to Baylor. Last year he had 20 tackles, 15 quarterback hurries, which tells you he's going to rush the quarterback a little bit. Um, he's a massive guy. So at the combine, he was 335. Back on in January, when you and I talked, he was 358. So he fluctuates. He's a big body guy. He's 6'3". He's got a lot of natural ability. He's got some good short area burst. Um, sometimes I would say the reason he slid to the third round is that he always doesn't play to his size. So here you're going to see him using an attack. He's going to push this guy back and use his leverage. He sometimes doesn't use that leverage. Now, I think he's a perfect fit now with Dalvin Thompson because Dalvin Thompson will now get the double teams. But this is a guy who can get in a gap. And that those big body guys, they are so hard to stop once they get moving, uh, especially when they're just taking a gap. So he's a guy who's going to create pressure. He might be a rotational guy early, but he's a guy with Dalvin Thompson on their side. He could be really successful. Again, for the scheme, this late, you know, late third round, this is a really good value pick. 
And, and um, a guy that you know Jim Schwartz likes based on how they interacted uh, when the Browns were letting him know they drafted him. Um, another guy, big-bodied guy, that's a, a theme here, uh, Dewan Jones, um, offensive tackle from Ohio State. What do you see with him? Well, he's a he's a massive guy and in the NFL. He's a massive guy. He uses those traits. So the thing you like about him, he's he's six eight, he's three seventy five at least. Um, he's got these measurables: thirty six plus uh, arms. Uh, his wingspan is eighty seven plus. He's got eleven plus inch hands that are really really strong and violent. And the thing that he can do is very much like an Orlando, uh, Orlando Brown with Cincinnati, who had that massive frame. He's able to invite people into his chest and invite, he's able to do things that only he and Orlando Brown can do because of their size. He's not a guy who moves his feet, mirror, mirror back and forth really well, but he does a really good job. He's a much better athlete than you would think he would be at 375 pounds. Uh, here's a great example. So the guy from Michigan here is going to shoot. He's going to actually let him into his chest and use those long, massive arms to push him down. He's very violent with his hands. He, he wanted to be a basketball player, so he's got some good lateral skills. Uh, this is a guy who could be an absolute steal. Um, he's he's so massive, and, and I just think he's you know he can use things like angles and make sure that he's wide in his stance. And there's things you can do to kind of adjust to his lack of footwork at times or his lack of um, lateral movement. But this guy is massive. He's got long arms. He's really good pass protection. He's nasty in the run game. Uh, another great value pick. I just want to say that man can dunk a basketball standing still as well. There, there was videos circulating, so that'll give you an idea of the type of athlete that he is. Um, they went back on the defensive side of the ball later in the fourth round and took Isaiah McGuire, a guy we talked about last week. So this is a guy I really, really like. So 6'4", he's 270. So here's 268, 270. So he can fluctuate in Schwartz's scheme, go down to that three technique, bump outside, uh, he's big enough to set the edge. He's also big enough to play inside, hang in there on those double teams. He's a really aggressive player. So you're going to see him in his stance. He's always twitchy. He's very excitable. He loves to play. Um, the thing I like about him, he does a really good job. Now, his hands aren't great. He's not super violent with his hands. But he does a great job of going from power to speed or speed to power. Uh, kind of like the Miles Murphy kid that comes in that was in Cincinnati. So right here, you're going to see he's actually going to start off with a bull brush really, really quick. And then he's going to go to a rep and get to the edge. And he does this very well. Sometimes he'll push the edge and then get into a bull rush. So he's not a super speed guy and he's not a super power guy. But when he combines those two, he's really, really uh, efficient. Again, he plays with a lot of emotion. He's uh, position flexible. Uh, a guy that I liked, I thought he would be gone by the time the Browns got here. So, uh, again, a uh, value pick, a guy who fits what they want size-wise. So the Browns have gotten much bigger up front on the defensive line which they needed to do. They needed some pass rushers, but they needed some big body guys in there, and they've done that. At pick 140, um, the Browns went and got a quarterback, uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Tell us more about him. Well, similar skill set to Sean Watson. He's got great feet and athleticism. Um, he played with Chip Kelly, so he knows how to do all this stuff. He can. He's played in multiple formations. Uh, he understands how to run um, three- and five-step drops, RPOs, uh, setting protection, being an empty, throwing on the run. He, he can throw from all the platforms. And I don't think he's as high level, obviously, as Deshaun Watson, but he has those skill sets. And for me, Dorian Thompson, a lot of people have talked about his relationship with Watson. For me as a coach, I like the fact that the rest of the offense, when he comes in, does not have to change. Those guys get more reps at what they want to do because they don't have to change anything. And I think that's so important for an offensive lineman, a running back, receivers. They're not learning new stuff and doing some new stuff. They're repping what they do. And when you rep, that's when you win. When you have more reps and you learn it and you're good at it, that's how you, that's how you become successful. So I love his skill set. I think he matches with the Browns. You know, there's some D, there's some DBs out there. There's some tight end or two out there that people, you know, think Browns could have picked. But this is the guy that fits the skill set and allows the offense to stay the same when he's in the game. So two picks later, that Thompson uh, Robinson went at 140, 142. They go back to the secondary and take a cornerback from Northwestern, Cameron Mitchell. We're well, going to see Cameron. You know, Cameron Mitchell is a guy who is probably going to be a slot corner. You can see him here. He's going to he's going to bomb the screen. He's at true corner. He's going to close uh, really really hard on the safe uh, receiver running a slant. Um, he's very, very smart. Uh, so he understands route combinations and where they're coming from. 
he's best in press man coverage. He's oh, just okay in zone right now. He'll learn that. But for Schwartz, he's going to be a lot more man coverage, and he's going to be in the slot. Uh, he's very aggressive. He can also, I think he could also be, uh, even though they did sound, uh, sign the cloud, uh, I think he's a guy who can also play some safety and be that Delta guy down in the box. He's very aggressive. Uh, he came on blitzes. Uh, he played down in the box. He's very good at run support. So he's a physical guy. He's 5'11". He's 191 pounds. Again, he's very smart. He understands route concepts. Uh, I think he's a very, again, a value pick. A guy who runs very well, tackles, does everything they want. He can play multiple positions. Then um, with their final pick in the sixth round, they traded the seventh round pick. So their final pick, they end up going with another offensive lineman from Ohio State, center Luke Whipler. So you're going to see him here against Georgia. He does a really good job. My favorite part of him is he gains depth, a little bit of depth. And we used to call it toe to heel. So he's going to just gain, he's going to backpedal just about a half a yard here. And with, by doing that, he's going to allow his right guard to pick up the blitz here from Georgia. He does a really good job of this uh, in everything he does. He's 6'3", he's 303 pounds. He gets to the second level very well. He's very aggressive. Um, he has really good hands. So when he gets his hands on you, I like the fact that he works his hands individually and not together. And that's so important in, in pass protection. Um, you, know, I, you know, the question people would have is how good is he going to get? You know, what is his upside? Uh, you know, these later rounds, is he a guy that's maximized his effort? I say no because of Bill Callahan. So whatever he can get to, Bill Callahan will get him to. Uh, Callahan is the, the most impressive line coach you could ever watch. So this is a guy that, even though that he has not played guard, um, if you watch the Browns, what they do, it's a it's a unified front. Those guys, uh, those interior guys can play a lot. And the thing I like about him, like I said, he takes that depth, he, he fights to get square. Uh, you know, protects that A and B gap. I think he's going to be a really good player. Uh, again, a young kid, I think he's a guy who has pretty good upside. Uh, so, again, he, Browns didn't have a first or second round pick, and you see where they can use most of the guys they selected. They don't have to use them immediately, but you can see what they're thinking um, with these selections. Well, I think, you know, the only the only bad point is no blame. So the Browns went in, they had all these holes that they had to fix and they had to address. And through free agency in the draft, they've addressed almost all their issues. Now, you have to go out there and you have to perform on the field, but they've addressed all their issues uh, from the defensive line to the edge, to the offensive line, um, to the safety position, which they addressed um, just recently. Uh, so they've addressed all these positions, and now they have guys that can come in and get better. Uh, a guy like Dewan Jones, he doesn't have to be a star right now. He doesn't have to be the starting left tackle and, and protect Deshaun Watson. He's a guy that's going to learn. Uh, he's going to learn the NFL system. All those guys coming in, they don't have to be, even Tillman, they don't have to be the guys right now. And I think that's important. And that's kind of a sign of a good team where you don't have to come in and be the franchise guy right away. Browns they, for years did that. Now they're drafting to for depth and they're dra uh, drafting for the future. And I think they did a really good job of getting tons of value from the third round on. Lance Roslin, as always, great stuff. Appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much, Lance. As always, thanks for having me. Lance Roslin, make sure you check him out. Always really good film and video breakdown, cleveland.com. You can also check him out, pages of the Plain Dealer. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. We continue talking Browns on Sports for CLE. Stay with us. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to OhioLottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. We continue talking Browns on uh, Sports 4 CLE. So uh, the Browns agreed to terms with a veteran safety uh, yesterday, Rodney McLeod. And, and when you look at it, uh, McLeod's 33 years old, but still pretty darn effective. 80-plus um, overall PFF grade in over 1,000 snaps, including an 85-plus coverage grade in over 500 coverage snaps. Um, uh, again, signed as a veteran to kind of add to Juan Thornhill and Grant Delpit. Let's welcome in Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report. And 
Uh, Brad, they, they don't have to play Rodney McLeod. He may end up working his way in there because of his familiarity with Jim Schwartz's system. Yeah, really good signing. Uh, knows the system. Now, when he played for Schwartz, he was on the Super Bowl team in Philadelphia. He kind of played a more of a deep free safety role. Um, and to show his versatility, he played most of last year with the Colts in the box. Um, and he played about 170. He played 174 snaps in the slot, which is intriguing as well, right? Because we don't really know what's going to happen with, you know, uh, the nickel situation, although they do have Cameron Mitchell now. But with Cameron Mitchell and Rodney McLeod in dime situations, he can cover the slot. Uh, I think he finds his way on the field. Um, I'm sure he's somebody that Schwartz trusts, but you instantly, you know, it, that was a major concern for me when leaving the draft um, that they didn't address, you know, a, a safety and safety depth. And uh, so immediately uh, solved that issue by going out and getting McLeod on a cheap deal. So really, really good move by Andrew Barry. So the Bleacher Report um, has kind of named each and every team's best value pick in the draft. Uh, when they talk about the Browns, they like uh, Siaka Ika um, taken with the 98th overall pick. Ika is 6 3 3 335, kind of immobile force in the middle of the defense that the Browns need. With the Browns drafting Ika and signing Delvin Tomlinson, they have a defensive tackle duo who can clog lanes and hold firm in run situations. And you didn't have to watch the Browns a whole lot um, past week one last, last year to see that was, uh, that was a problem. Yes, it was. Uh, so this is definitely a Schwartz pick, right? Like this is totally Schwartz. Give me some size. Give me somebody. Um, they believe that he can play, you know, one tech shade nose and some three tech. Uh, they're going to ask him to get up field, right? Like they're going to, you know, Schwartz's system. They don't want a two gap. They want guys slicing into the backfield, right? So uh, they think he can do that. I thought one of the more interesting comments about Ika, uh, although personally, I must say, Dave, you know, not to sound like a hypocrite here, I would have rather them signed a uh, a free agent to fill this role um, just because it takes some time for rookies and guys like this to adjust to the NFL. However, um, I thought it was interesting. Andrew Barry said, you know, he played in the Big 12. So he played like 90 plays a game and it was up pace and passing all over the place. Uh, and, and not in the Big Ten where, you know, there's a significant amount of running the football and you can just take up space and do a job. He actually had to do other things in the Big 12 uh, to be effective. Um, and I found that an interesting comment in, in that he drew that parallel to the NFL game, you know, uh, where the, it's going to be a lot more passing and wide open and more plays. So uh, that's what he liked about him. Uh, I think he is probably your best chance uh, of any of the draft picks to – make an impact right away um, because of need, right? And uh, so um, we'll see what he can do. Uh, he's a big fella, and uh, let's, let's hope he keeps the size under control and, and uh, can disrupt, right? I hope he works out. Yeah, I, um, I felt a little bit better about him after seeing the way Jim Schwartz reacted to him. You could tell um, that it was a Jim Schwartz pick, so – you got to give the defensive coordinator the guys he feels can play his scheme. So uh, let's 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 trust Jim Schwartz on him and see if uh, if he was right. 2023 NFL Agreed. offseason grades by CBS Sports. Um, they they grade the Browns with a C. So um, the top grade went to the Lions was one, Jets were two, Panthers were three. The, the Browns at 18. They give him a grade of a C. Paid quite a bit for a run stuffer in Dalvin Tomlinson, and they're counting on younger vets like Oaken Ronquo and Thornhill to reach new heights and new scenery. Swapping picks to land Elijah Moore, however, was a creative way to bring in some added juice, and their third-round addition of Cedric Tillman bolsters that position for the future. Um, I, the 18 pick is as low as I've seen. The, the grade in their offseason, 18 and saying a C. I don't know that they overpaid for Tomlinson. That was um, was a position they needed, and, and they didn't want to pay the heavier price for uh, Draymond Jones and, uh, and Hargrave. 
they should be above 18. I mean, that's just absurd. But this is this is the Deshaun Watson tax. Nobody wants to give the Browns a high grade uh, on anything because the Watson thing is just still too close. And uh, uh, there are people that want to keep that at arm's length, I believe. And, and we've seen we've seen this since last season. Right. You know. In all these power rankings, I think they're getting taxed like five to ten spots, and in this case, even more. I think. Yeah, and, and you know what? That's fine. They get to prove it on the field. So, um, yes. If if the Browns go out and play the way we think they might, it, that's going to look pretty foolish when you look back at it. Um, let's talk about the ro- roster. What question marks do you still have about this roster as we sit a week away from the beginning of rookie mini camp out in Berea next Friday? Um. Running back, uh, they need another running back. Um, there's been some murmurs around Justin Jackson's uh, agent. I think he would be a good fit. He was an effective guy for the Chargers, right, out of the backfield and can run the ball um, between the tackles. So, I mean, there's a list of about 15 running back, veteran running backs out there. You know, for me, I wish they would have drafted a guy um, – you know, uh, a Dwayne McBride was on the board late, somebody like that, right? Uh, that This was a good draft with a lot of running back value, and they didn't. And they bring in Hassan Hall in the UDFA class, who really doesn't solve much for you as for, if you're looking for your third running back, right? Um, so I, I don't think they're going back to Kareem Hunt. I think that's over with. So uh, I think you look for what else. You can find a cheap veteran to bring into camp and and be your emergency guy or or whatever you want to do if you want to give Ford the opportunities, which I think they should do as the second guy. Uh, But I look for a guy like Justin Jackson or somebody like that that's maybe still in their 20s and has some legs under him. A lot of those guys on that list of free agents available are over the age of 30 at this point, Dave. Yeah, and Jackson is a guy that, you know, was blocked by Austin Eckler early in his career, so doesn't have a lot of carries, doesn't have a lot of, a lot yep. of work. But when Eckler went down, he, he was pretty effective. Um, is, is there an, do you think the need for a, a, another linebacker exists as well? I think I actually I don't think they will because I think they're in on Diabate, uh, the UDFA they brought in. He's an impressive get as a UDFA. They gave him some guaranteed money. I think he's probably, you know, uh, the guy that they wanted to add to that room. Probably I think that's probably the last addition to that room. Uh, you know, I am all for adding as many veteran guys as you can to create competition. So if they go add another guy for competition, I'm all for it. I just get the feeling that the Abate is maybe the last piece of competition they're going to throw in there and expect him maybe to make the 53. Um, uh, maybe probably best chance of all the UDFAs maybe. Um, so uh, I think that uh, he makes a lot of sense. The other position I would I, I still have questions about. I don't know if they'll do it or not. It's hard to balance like you've got your Isaiah McGuire and you've got your Alex Wright and you want to give them opportunities, but you also want to win now and you're gonna need to offset missing snaps uh, from Okoronkwo, right? And there's a ton of really good veteran edges that can be had for cheap still on the board. Carlos Dunlap, Frank Clark, Melvin Ingram, right? Like uh, Leonard Floyd, Robert Quinn, Justin Houston. All of these guys uh, could be had. And um, they would push appropriately kind of the rookies down the depth chart a little bit. Uh, You can still get McGuire in in right in there in a rotational role. I'll be okay if they leave it as it is and see what they can do, but I would feel better if they got another guy. Yeah, if, I'll if leave they, it at that. If they leave it as it is, you look for cut down day and, and you see what names might pop up. Um, if you're not happy yep. with the young guys, um, that's kind of the yep. the plan B. Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report and I are going to step aside, take a quick time out, other side of the break. We'll head back to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Sports for CLA will be right back. Stay with us. Come back to go forward. Back to learning new things. Back to pursuing your dreams. Tri-C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. 
The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Try C, where futures begin. We continue talking Browns with Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report. Let's head back to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Hi, this is Rico. I read an article ranking the best divisions in football, and once again, the AFC North is the top division. Do you see a viable path that all four teams make the playoffs? Ultimately, as long as the Browns make it in, that's what matters. But I'm just trying to ask if all four could make it in. As far as it seems, I do believe it can happen. What do you think? Thanks. As always, appreciate uh, all of the voicemails. Brad, the, the thing that would make it really difficult is they're going to beat up on each other. Um, it, it's, is it possible? Yeah, there's seven playoff teams from each conference, so it's possible. But you're, you know, you're, you're playing those teams twice. Yeah, they're going to beat up on each other really good. And uh, Brad Ward... Uh, had a little bit of issues there with Brad, so uh, we will. Oh, Brad's back. So gonna... I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, tough divisional play. Well, they'll beat up on each other. But here's the thing, though, about about their 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 you know schedule is they have the NFC West and the AFC South. NFC West right now, Cardinals are down. Rams are down. Right. Seattle is going to be probably pretty good. And, of course, San Francisco is always good. But then if you look at the, you know, the AFC South, you're also – there's a lot of question marks there with the Texans, the Colts, the Titans. What are they going to be this year? It's hard to say. Uh, obviously, the Jaguars will be pretty good. But right now – and, and it, it never turns out how we think, right? But if right now you were to judge their – what who the AFC North plays – Conference wise, it's a little bit light on uh, if at first uh, glance there. So I would say they have a good chance to kind of maybe beat up on the AFC South a little bit and get a couple wins against the Rams and and the Cardinals who are expected to be down. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to ultimately be tough to get all four teams in just because they're going to beat up on each other, like you said. Yep, um, this is kind of interesting. So Juan Thornhill, New Brown safety, um, committed all in. Take a look. He, All he, in. He got a Brownie the Elf tattoo by the NFL Shield. So um, it, it looks pretty good. I got to be honest. The, the tattoo's pretty well done. It, it's uh, it's kind of interesting. Fans will like the fact uh, that he has done that. Yeah, you, I mean, it, how can you not like it, right? The guy's all in. He gets the elf tattoo. You got to love it, right? Like, it, you know, uh, Thornhill is – I wish he would kind of stop tweeting so much because that scares me sometimes um, with with our history with Browns guys on Twitter. Uh, but uh, he is all over Twitter all the time and social media. But, you know, you've got to like the buy-in. And, um, you know, he spoke up with the uh, around the Newsom stuff too – uh, you know, we're in it for the long haul, he said. So you got to like the messaging that he sends and maybe a little bit of leadership there that was missing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, fans are going to love that. Uh, I love the Juan Thornhill signing. I think he's going to be a great player on the back end. So um, interesting. Very, very well done, Elf, though. For that position on the arm, that'd be kind of difficult. Good artwork there. A absolutely. Uh, an A+. Plus. And you know what? It's, it's a guy that's been to the Super Bowl. So, um yeah. He, he has a little cachet there. Uh, this is kind of interesting before I let you go. Wins by one score or less in 20, uh, since 2021. So the Bills have 18, the 49ers have 15, the Chiefs, Cowboys, and Eagles have 14, the Bengals have 13. Uh, those are the top six. The Browns are down at uh, 14 with the Dolphins and Titans with eight. But you notice those names. Those are the names of the teams that are among the elite. So what it says is very small things separate the elite from the middle of the pack in the NFL. Yeah, I don't remember uh, eight times that the Browns won by more than one score. I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my heart doesn't remember those ones, to be honest, Dave. Uh, but sure, uh, I, you know, what it tells me a little bit is – 
when the Browns are hitting on, on all cylinders, which they've had trouble doing, but when they are, you know, we've seen those blowouts against really good teams like the Bengals and the Ravens a couple years ago, right? Like when they are hitting on all phases, they, they look really good. So um, the sky's the limit. There's plenty of talent here. Can they bring it all together? I love that they're going away together this year uh, to West Virginia, to Briar, whatever it is. Uh, Greenbrier. And uh, in West Virginia. Yes, there you go, Greenbrier. I was going to say Briarwood, but that's not right. Uh, Greenbrier to get, you know, the camaraderie. I love that stuff. Like that, that is good for this team that needs an identity. Uh, it's good for the culture, especially the new guys there. Um, the other thing I think it says about, you notice they're there with the Titans. That's like the Nick Chubb factor, right? Like if you have a lead late in the fourth quarter yep. and you can just hand the ball to Chubb, you end up winning by more than a score. So, uh, but I don't remember those eight games. I remember sweating them all out. That's all I know. So, <laughs> Brad Ward, as always, appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much, Brad. Thank you, Dave. Have a great one, man. All right, Brad Ward, make sure you check him out. Always really good stuff on the Orange and Brown Report as well. Well, each week in conjunction with the Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program, we recognize a role model student from somewhere uh, across the state of Ohio. We always get questions uh, about what is the Partners in Education program. So uh, we thought we'd give you an idea of how the Ohio Lottery supports education throughout the state of Ohio. School funding across the country is a concern. Here in Ohio, it's important to remember that the Ohio Lottery plays a vital role in education that shouldn't be overlooked or minimized. 100% of Ohio Lottery profits go to the Lottery Profits Education Fund, and that helps to fund K-12 education here in the state of Ohio. Our lottery funds make up about 12% of the entire school funding pie. For more than 15 years, the Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has put the spotlight on some of the important work that's being done throughout Ohio in our schools from kindergarten through 12th grade. The Partners in Education program started back in 2007, and since then we've been honoring outstanding students and teachers across the state of Ohio. The Partners in Education program really ties into our mission here at the Lottery. As I've stated, it's to generate funding for K-12 education here in Ohio. But what Partners in Ed does is it takes that one step further and we get to see what wonderful teachers we have here in the state of Ohio and awesome students and the things that they're doing both inside and outside the classroom. The Partners in Education program recognizes both students as academic all-stars and teachers as the Teacher of the Month who are making a difference. Each month we accept nominations in each of our nine regions all across the state. This year we've had over 600 nominations and 116 Teachers of the Month and Academic All-Stars who have been named. It is fun to see who is getting nominated and who's nominating them. Sometimes it's just a member of the community who has seen something great that a teacher has done and they've come on to make a nomination. So it really is a great program that gets the entire community involved, really. Your school community, family, friends, you could jump on and nominate whoever you want. The nomination process for both Teacher of the Month and Academic All-Stars can be done completely online. To nominate, visit OhioLottery.com on a desktop or on a mobile phone. Select the About tab and click on Partners in Education. From this page, you can either select to nominate a student or a teacher. It's fast and it's free. Just fill in all the fields and click Submit. Easy. So the program runs from September to May. And then at the end of the year, we take all of the schools who've had a nomination and we put them into the drawing for the School of the Year. There is only one School of the Year winner. Um, and that winner receives a $1,000 gift card. They get merchandise from our major and minor league sports teams here in Ohio that they can use for fundraising efforts. They also get a School of the Year trophy, and every student gets a School of the Year backpack. Nominate a student or teacher from your school, and your school could end up as the School of the Year. If you know a student who deserves recognition, we want to hear about them, and you can nominate them completely online. Go to OhioLottery.com. Find the About section. Click on Partners in Education. There you will see links to nomination forms. Nominate that student as an academic all-star, and they could end up being featured 
as our next shining star. And uh, the last of the drawings for the student and, and uh, teacher of the month nominations are due uh, next week. So uh, your last chance to get in there and you could end up with the school of the year if you nominate a student or a teacher. That's going to do it for this edition of Sports for CLE. We will see you back here Monday at 4 o'clock. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you Monday at 4 on Sports for CLE.